Hello, welcome to my YouTube channel, Milana Alicia here. In today's video, I'll be explaining how I got my internship at Google. A lot of you really enjoyed my previous video on how I got my job at MTV Networks following my graduation from Bard College in May of 2018, and many of you wanted to know what my prior career experience was. If you're new to my YouTube channel or if you haven't seen my LinkedIn yet, I'll give a quick summary of my background. I am from New Orleans, Louisiana, and I went to Bard College. Before I went to Bard College, I was awarded the Posse Foundation Scholarship, which is one of the most renowned and comprehensive full tuition leadership scholarships that is awarded to 10 students in major cities throughout the United States, and they are sent off to Posse partner schools. At Bard College, I did a double major in film and electronic arts, where I specialized in film production and documentary making, and also I majored in anthropology, where I specialized in community development post-disaster. At Bard College, I gained lots of diverse experiences. I was the head of Bard on Television, which is a film production club. I was on the squash team. I was a sales rep at the Bard College Fund. I was a media fellow at the Hannah Arendt Center. I was a political fellow at the Hannah Arendt Center. I was a citizen science teaching fellow where I taught biology. I was a social media assistant. I was a digital media assistant for the Office of Publications. I did a lot of freelance stuff. I literally did everything that you could do on that campus. In addition to being active on campus, I made sure to remain active off campus. And so after my first year of college, I interned at Intergy in New Orleans with their people operations team. And following my sophomore year, I interned at Viacom with BET Networks and their television programming and scheduling team in New York City. And being that I had such diverse career experience, ranging from film, media, tech, sales. I knew I wanted my last internship in college to be special. And so during the first semester of my junior year of college, I was just lousing about and trying to figure out what I wanted to do for my last internship in college. And I honestly didn't even think of interning at Google. But one day I was on the internet, on Google looking for internships. And I was like, does Google have an internship program? It must have an internship program. So I Googled Google internship. When I Googled Google internship, the application popped up and I applied. I pulled up my old emails and I actually applied for the Google Gold internship on December 2nd, 2016. This is the thank you note that I got from Google after I submitted the application online December 2nd, 2016 at 4.58 p.m. The application was pretty straightforward. You supplied your cover letter, your resume, and then you answered some questions. And at the time when I applied, you were able to either decide if you wanted to apply as a tech intern or as a non-tech intern. And obviously I applied as a non-tech intern because I don't necessarily have a computer science or engineering background. You were also able to pick which department you saw yourself most likely in the options at the time were, I believe, sales, marketing, and people operations. And I picked people operations being that I had prior people operations experience. And then you simply submit your resume, your cover letter, pick which department you see yourself in and you press submit. After I applied, I didn't hear back for about three months and I was sort of okay with it. I didn't really expect to hear back because it's Google, like statistics show that getting an internship at Google is equivalent to getting admitted into Harvard, which is like what a 14% or 4% chance of getting in. So I was like completely fine with not hearing back at all. At the time I was also applying for other internships and interviewing with them. And I was also on campus working as a biology teaching assistant for the citizen science teaching program. Um, one day when I was in labs preparing some Petri dishes for my students, I got an email from a human resources rep at Google and she was like, hi, Milan, um, we received your resume for the Google Bold internship. We think you will be a great fit for our YouTube partnerships team. And so I, I didn't know if it was a legit email, you know, I was like, Google is emailing me. And so I went out to my other teaching fellows and I was like, yo, like Google just emailed me. I then reread the email that I was sent from the recruiter to make sure that it was a legit email from Google. And it just says, hi, Milan, thank you again for your application to the 2017 Boat Internship Program. Our team had the opportunity to review your resume and think you'd be a great fit for our YouTube content partnerships team. After that, the next step was for me to fill out another application and the next application wanted me to detail a bit about my career experience. And so it wanted me to list each internship or volunteer experience that I had. Then after I submitted that second application, I didn't hear back for another few weeks. So I'm thinking like, oh, I guess I almost had it, but I didn't. 
Um, and then a few days later, a few weeks later, the recruiter reached back out to me and she was like, hi, we've been in touch with our scheduling recruiters and we would like to schedule you to have two Google Hangout video interviews with two managers from the YouTube online content partners and development team. So one thing I really appreciated about the recruiters at Google was that prior to your interviews, they will send you a myriad amount of information for you to study about the team you're going to be on, Google history, um, your team's history, and also videos for you to watch on the organizations within your team. And for me, I was interning specifically for the YouTube online content partnerships team. And so they sent me a lot of decks and one sheets on what that team specifically does, who the members are on the team, and ways that I could prepare for the interview. And I was ready. I studied every single piece of information that they sent me. And I also went on YouTube to learn more about the YouTube platform itself. Like the team that I was on worked with optimizing the YouTube channels of large YouTube creators. So I learned about metadata, SEO, SEM, monetization, analyzation of YouTube channels. I learned all that stuff. I even took courses on the YouTube Creator Academy because I wanted to be on point if they had a question to ask me. And I just wanted to make sure that I sort of knew how to answer to the best of my ability. And it's okay if you don't memorize everything that they send you. And it's okay if a recruiter asks you a question or if a manager asks you a question during the interview and you stumble or if you just simply say you don't know like that's fine they don't expect you to be experts but it is very beneficial to you if you do try to study as much as possible my first interview took place with a manager from the youtube online content partnerships team and that interview was held over google hangout which is sort of like skype or blue jeans video conference call and it was very behavioral based and background based and so he asked me questions about my prior internship experience about what i'm doing on campus um but then he also asked very weird google questions that i'm pretty sure you've heard of such as you know how many starbucks are in um louisiana or he would ask me questions like how many windows are in new york city or how would you if you were the mayor of a big city like new york city or los angeles how would you manage the traffic of the downtown area um questions that you will have no idea how to answer and you're not supposed to have the answer that's the point what they want to see is your thinking process not a right answer because there isn't one it's like are you able to ask questions or do you get nervous and stumble? Do you just give up? Or do you try to actively solve it? That's what they want to see. And so I had that interview. It was about an hour. And then after that, I made sure to send a follow-up email to each of my recruiters. I was like, thank you. I had a great time meeting with this manager on the YouTube team. I look forward to hearing you back. And then I didn't hear back for about a week. So I'm like, okay, that's fine. I guess I didn't make it to the next round. And then a few weeks later, I was emailed by the recruiters and I was scheduled for my second interview with another manager from the YouTube team. And my second interview was more related to the position itself. And so she asked me a lot of questions about the team and my knowledge of the team and my knowledge of the YouTube platform. And if I had any experience with working with YouTube or working with content creators um, and things of that sort. And so I think that's why it's really important for you to study whatever information that they give you because you will be asked about it during your interviews. And then following that interview, I once again sent another follow-up email, but the second email was a longer because that was the final interview. It was like much longer, probably way too long. Um, and then a week later, I didn't hear back. <laughs> I know, I didn't hear back, but then the next week I was doing laundry or something. I was like, just, on campus like I, I was in a basement I was it was weird you know Bard if you've ever been to Bard College it's like really weird so I was just like somewhere downstairs um and then my phone rang from some number I didn't know what it was and I usually don't answer numbers that I don't know but I was just also interviewing for other jobs I mean other internships and so I just answered my phone and it was the recruiter from Google and she was like, hi, Milan, how are you? And I'm like, hi, I'm well, thank you for calling. It's great speaking with you. And she was like, um, I received feedback from both of the managers at Google and they think that you would be a great fit for the YouTube team here. And I just like cried. I like legit cried and it was loud too. Like it was a, a loud, ugly cry. 
And I was like, are you for real? She was like, yeah. She and then, But she heard me crying too, which was like even more embarrassing. And she was like, it's okay to cry. I'm very excited for you. Um, what we'll do is that we'll give you a few days to decide it. I'm like, oh no, I'm ready. <laughs> like I'm ready to say yeah. But then she was like, you know, we still want to give you time to decide. Um, and so a few days later, she emailed me with, um, and it was like an internship agreement. I don't know what the exact title of it was called, but it's like basically you press like, yes you fill out a form like stating that you'll be interning with the company and so i filled out that form and then i became an intern at google and i was happy i went into it not thinking that i would hear back and then after i heard back i thought i wouldn't make it to the next interview and then i didn't uh, make it to the next interview and then i got the position and i was just ecstatic I was in New York at the time at Bard College and I'm from New Orleans and YouTube itself is located in California in San Bruno and so for the internship I had to relocate across the country once again another thing I'm appreciative of Google is that for internships and I think with all new hires of the company is that they offer you a relocation stipend. Google provides you a relocation stipend to relocate to whichever city that you're interning in. Google has offices in California, in Texas, Michigan, New York, Atlanta, and I think some other cities or states throughout the United States. Um, and so for me, once I received my relocation stipend, um, Google also sent us a spreadsheet of all the other interns. And so I met with two interns from that spreadsheet and we sort of decided to rent an Airbnb for three months. And I ended up uh, while well, the three of us ended up renting an Airbnb in San Francisco in the Richmond neighborhood. And for me to get to work in San Bruno, it, that was about a 30 minute bus ride and Google provides free transportation depending on where your office is. I interned with the YouTube online content partnerships and development team. And what that team does is optimize the channels of YouTubers who have between 100,000 and a million subscribers by assisting them with their audience development their business strategies, their programming strategies, we make sure that they're monetized, that they're understanding their analytics, that they understand their metadata. And we're just making sure that they're set up for as much success as they, as they can get on the YouTube platform. Like this team sort of serves as management for these large YouTube creators if they don't have, or if they're not signed to an outside management agency. As a YouTube intern, I was partnered with two of those really big YouTubers um, which was very exciting for me as a little intern. I was working with some pretty big YouTubers. And so what would happen is that each week we would either have a Google Hangout call, a phone call, or an in-person meeting where the YouTubers would come to us with questions on how they could best optimize their channels. And we would suggest strategies on whatever they needed assistance with. And so that was the premise of my role. But then in addition to that, I worked on three projects. I worked on one project where I worked with the YouTube creator community, which is a smaller platform for YouTubers who are starting out at zero. Um, it's a website, sort of like a forum style where small YouTubers go on and ask questions about YouTube. And that project entailed me serving as a YouTube rep or official YouTube employee. And I would basically post optimization tips and tricks on how they could best succeed on the YouTube platform. So each week I would go on and post um, post on like, this is how you know what metadata is. This is how you write a proper title. This is how you should tag your videos without getting flagged. This is how you should create your thumbnails. This is how you should not get spammed. This is what copyright is. It would just basically be information on how to YouTube. Like I wanted to make sure that they were giving given as much information so that they could be, become successful and big enough so that they could eventually work with the YouTube partner team. And so the goal with that project was to have me as YouTube intern, have my posts be the most interacted with per week. And so we were able to measure that internally. And throughout my internship, my posts became the most interacted with on the YouTube creator community platform. And so being that I was able to see the success of that and data, I reached out to my manager and I was like, I think for my second project, I think I should create an OKR, which is an objective and key results, which are these things that Google uses to sort of track goals of each team within Google. And I was like, I think we should create an OKR where our team 
has to interact with this small community at least five times per quarter. That can be simply through posting a post, uh, tips and tricks post. It could be through hosting the AMA, ask me anything. It could be through live stream, but it just has to be you guys interacting with this team to let them know that YouTube itself is here and we're ready to make sure that they're successful in its platform. And so to get that, I had to present like a deck to like the all the big heads of my team. I was nervous because they were like, six managers on my team and I had to go through different rounds of this deck because sometimes it wouldn't get approved but eventually that project got approved and it became an OKR which is like a big thing for my team like it became an official project for my team and then my final project was working with the YouTube live stream team and so that project was not assigned to me it was something that I just sort of picked out one day I was walking around YouTube office and I saw that there was a studio there and I'm like I'm a film major like I want to be in a studio and so I just like emailed the head of that studio and I was like, hey, like I was walking around the office with some mac and cheese and I saw a studio, like what can I do to assist y'all? And he was like, oh, we don't have any projects for you, um, but thank you for reaching out. And I was like, oh, okay. And so I didn't have a project with them. But at the same time, our partners were wanting to learn how to YouTube live stream because on YouTube, when you live stream, it's not as simple as when you live stream on Instagram or Facebook where you press live and you're live. On YouTube, you have to download this, download this thing called an encoder, connect it to YouTube and set up your, your YouTube live stream event. It gets complicated. And so I emailed them and I was like, hi, like our team uh, wants to figure out a solution to help make live streaming easier to our partners. Is there a way that I could assist with that? And he was like, well, still no, like we don't have anything for you to work on. And I was like, what if I created like a series of videos on how to live stream. And he was like, you know, if you want to do it, you can do it. And so I was like, okay, cool. And so I had to reach out to my manager and I was like, hi, is it okay if I take on this additional project? Because at the time I only had a few weeks of my internship left. And he was like, if you think you can do it, you should try it. And so I ended up creating three videos on how to live stream on YouTube. And that was my official project. One thing I should know is that at Google, depending on which team you work on and how your team uh, works interpersonally, you may or may not work independently on your projects. For me, I did work independently on my project, which was great because it was a great learning experience. But at the same time, I was able to ask for help or advice from my manager or from other members of my team whenever I felt necessary. In addition to all the projects I got to work on, I was also able to network with lots of different people at Google from many different teams. Google has this cool tool, um, well, I can't really say, but it's like this networking tool where it's a link and it sort of hyper generates uh, people for you to meet with uh, through some type of artificial intelligence. And so I would sort of go on that tool and just submit my name and it would sort of generate people and times, dates and places for you to meet. So I was able to network with lots of people there and also remain in contact with people from Google, which I continue to remain in contact with them to this day, um, especially on LinkedIn. One thing about Google is that they make sure they have lots of events for interns. And so we went to a baseball game, we had a yacht party, we went to a lot of like food events, like there was a lot for us to do to make sure that we were getting to know each other, but also having a great time because they knew a lot of us weren't from the Bay Area. So they wanted us to make like to make sure we felt as comfortable as possible. But overall, I had a really great experience interning at Google with YouTube, it was very challenging. There was a lot that I didn't know going in. Like it was my first time, well not my first time in the tech industry, but it was like my first time in like the valley with a lot of other tech people. Um, but I felt very supported through it. Um, and I think it really set me up for success with where I'm in now. I do think that I would like to re-enter the tech industry if I'm given an opportunity. Um, but we'll just sort of see how that goes. One highlight of my internship with Google was going to Los Angeles. So with YouTube and the YouTube Online Content Partnerships team is that it's a worldwide team. Like YouTube is in, I think all, like not all seven continents, but I think at least six of them. Um, and so teams from YouTube throughout each country went to LA for this sort of summit. And it was my first time in Los Angeles. Um, so I was able to sort of tour the downtown area. We were there for a week. And then we also had a free Snoop Dogg concert that was only available to YouTube employees. And that was really cool. Like, I don't know if you've ever been to a Snoop Dogg concert or if you read that article about his concert at that um, Kentucky school or wherever it was. Like, 
Snoop Dogg puts on a great show. So I just had a great experience being able to travel um, as an intern at Google. Some of you might be like, Milan, if you had such a great time at Google, why aren't you at Google now? And I'll tell you why, I'm gonna be honest. Okay, so Google offers this thing called conversion for interns. Um, and it really depends on the headcount of the teams that you're already on or the headcounts of potentially open teams. And so what happens is that towards the end of your internship, Google will start collecting headcounts from the teams that have interns and they'll let them know if they have headspace for um, an intern to join their team, you know, the following summer after graduation or whenever the headcount opens up. One of my roommates was offered conversion because her teammate had an open spot for her, you know, and she also performed really well during her internship. My other roommate wasn't offered conversion. She performed really well during her internship, but her team didn't have the headspace. None of the YouTube interns were offered conversion. Um, so at YouTube and Google, the uh, YouTube interns are sort of, I can't, I don't really know how to explain it, but we're sort of separate from the Google interns. And so we're also offered another type of conversion. And so at YouTube, like there was just not any headspace for any of YouTube interns. Um, and so none of us were offered conversion. And so like there's the person who interned on my team, I won't say her name, but hi. Um, she's also living in New York City now, working at, um, a television company. Um, there's another YouTube intern that's at at New York City now. He's working in music. There's someone else in Chicago who I think she's in consulting. Another one in New York City doing consulting. We aren't at Google now, um, but of course in the future, if the opportunity presents itself, I would of course um, enjoy returning back there. But for now, um, one thing I've learned is that a rejection, it wasn't really a rejection, but if it were, a rejection isn't a rejection, it's just a redirection. And so I'm just being optimistic and sort of allowing my journey to take me wherever that uh, or it chooses to take me. If there's any questions that I forgot to answer, which is probably a lot, feel free to leave them down in the comments. Um, but yeah, thank you once again for watching this video. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe, and follow me on my socials. And I'll see you in my next video. Bye.